welcome to, um, just one second. Sorry, I apparently didn't plan this very well. It's a bit louder than I thought it would be. Um, anyway, hello and welcome to Crow Forest Reviews. And welcome once again to the start of the Halloween season. And what better way to start off this season than with The Conjuring? Yeah, I can't think of a better intro than that. Roll it. Ooh, spooky. Hmm. So the movie opens with a creepy doll. Hmm, seems appropriate. It started out small, like a hand or a leg was in a different position, and its head was looking up instead of down, and then one day it was in a completely different room. It was moving around by itself. Anyway, the girls tell the Warrens that they told the demon that inhabiting the doll was totes okay with them but that Annabelle had proven to be a remarkably shitty roommate, so now they needed their help with the messy affair of divorce proceedings. She wanted to live with us by inhabiting the doll. We said yes. But then things got worse. We don't know what's going on or what to do. Can you help us? What? That's an accurate account of what happens. Demonic spirits don't possess things. They possess people. He wanted to get inside of you. Um, was there really no better way you could phrase that? He wanted to get inside of you. Oh my. Well, now that that horrifying image has been put into your head, cut over to the next scene, where it turns out that this whole thing has just been a lecture being given to a college, a high school, angry townsfolk, um, people. Any questions? Yes. Where's the doll now? So anyway, the Warrens continue to talk to the crowd for a bit, when suddenly they freeze frame and fade to black and white in front of the audience. But we prefer to be known simply as Ed and Lorraine Warren. It happens. Four score and seven years ago. And then the credits start rolling? Huh. I guess this is the new Annabelle movie that everyone's been talking about? Hmm. It's a lot shorter than I thought it would be. And now The Conjuring's starting? Uh, I guess it's a double feature? Anyway, the movie really opens with the family moving into the house. And before you ask what family and what house, it's a horror movie. We all knew it was going to be a family and a house. It's always a family and a house. So we get a brief montage of the family all moving into the house. Or at least most of them. Come on, Sadie. Sadie, let's go. Hey, come. What's the matter with you? Hey, come on, girl. All right, suit yourself. Oh, sorry, that's our fault. We forgot to train her. She's completely worthless. So anyway, the kids go exploring in the yard, and... Come on, April! Mom wants us inside! Look what I found, Cindy! Okay, just a little advice here, but if your house has a demon tree in the front yard, move out!
Hey, that's the backyard. That doesn't count. Demon trees in the backyard are fine. Anyway, inside, the kids decide to play a game of hide-and-seek. One, two, three. Ready or not, here I come! Sorry, I mean blind man's bluff. Okay, clap! I mean... What the hell are you doing? Anyway, the kids continue to play their bullshit plot device game, which, as you might expect, results in them breaking part of the house. Yes, yes! Are you okay? Hey, Nancy, can you go get me the matches, please? Yep, the panel fell off. We have to burn the whole house down now. I've got it! Arson! Oh, he meant for lights. What, has this idiot never heard of flashlights? He really is gonna burn the whole house down. So he knocks off the rest of the panels, and then he proceeds to go down a hidden staircase into an old cellar. Got extra square footage anyway. Huh. <laughs> These people have all the right reactions. Demon tree? Demon basement? Cool! No. No, those aren't cool. Those are both pants-shittingly terrifying. Someone's up with Sadie. Couldn't get her to come inside. Those damn set hands forgot to train her! And there was this really funky smell in my bedroom last night. It reeked like something died. Is it still there? No. Problem solved! Um, that's not how problems work. Hello, police! I need to file an incident report. There was a stalker outside my window! Is he still there? Um... No, he's not there now. Problem solved! So anyway, the mother goes down the stairs and... Ah! Ghost face! Oh, that's just a reflection. Whoa! This is gonna take some serious elbow grease. <laughs> and again with the underreactions. The proper response is, ah, demon, demon, ah! This clock stopped at 307 and so did the one in the hallway. That's weird. That was weird. Maybe you got knocked around on the move. Speaking of knocked around, what did you do to me last night? Um. So, anyway, after that, one of the girls goes to find the dog. What have the set hands done now? What's going on? What happened? Oh my god! They killed her? Now that is just blatant incompetence. You should really get a refund. Now you're gonna have to rewrite the whole script! So cut back to the Warrens who are apparently the B-plot now. Because there's apparently a B-plot now. Ed Warren is showing someone his collection of all things creepy. Everything you see in here is either haunted, cursed, or has been used in some kind of ritualistic practice. Why in the world would they keep any of this stuff? Huh, how'd that get there? Why not just throw them in an incinerator? Thank you! First sensible question of the movie. Finally, we have someone to root for. Destroy him. Well, that would only destroy the vessel. Sometimes it's better to keep the genie in the bottle. Right, because a demon can only inhabit one object at a time. Except that they can clearly have up to seven horcruxes, you moron. This doesn't make them any less able to move about freely. Hell, it makes them more able to move about freely because you're leaving a door open that they can continue to use. I sure hope this doesn't come back to bite you in the ass in the third act. Spoiler alert, it will. Say, is the uh, Annabelle doll here? Right this way. Okay, I do understand why they kept that one. 
creepy dolls make family reunions much more interesting. Oh, hey, I didn't know you had a kid. Aw, she's so cute. Aw, thanks. You wanna hold her? <laughs> I have an evil sense of humor. Anyway, the tour continues until Ed's daughter comes into the room. Which he left open for some reason. You can't go into this room no matter what, remember? That's why I left it open. Wait. Don't touch anything. This guy is as bad about closing the door as the guy from Sinister. You getting good work done? Yeah. Good. Please keep the door closed. So anyway, cut back to the real plot. The clocks all stop at 3.07, and then a demon starts terrorizing one of the girls. Actually, on second thought, terrorize is a strong word. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is still hella rude, but it just seems more like a schoolyard taunt. Does this annoy you? I'm not touching you. Does this annoy you? I'm not touching you. So anyway, cut back to the father taking a nap at the table. But uh-oh, something goed bump in the night, so he goes to investigate. on the stairs! Oh wait, that's his kid. Well, that's our first jump scare, everyone. I hope you found that satisfying. And it turns out that the bumping sound that he heard was caused by one of his other daughters who was banging her head against her dresser in apparent frustration. A gesture which I'm sure will be repeated by everyone involved in making this movie. So anyway, the next morning, the father goes out to go to work, when suddenly... Damn it! We were supposed to train that bird, too! We're really bad at our jobs. So anyway, after school, we cut over to one of the girls talking to her new invisible best friend about how the dog was her former best friend. I miss Sadie a lot. She was my best friend. Wow, that's kind of sad. You need to get a life, kid. And coming from me, that's pretty bad. Can we play hide and clap? No, that's not a real game, so no. So the mother, for some reason, decides to indulge her daughter's delusion that this insanity is somehow a real game, and she puts on a blindfold to walk around the new house. Because that's a good idea! But she does somehow manage to finally feel her way to what she assumes to be the right room. I can hear you breathing. Has your breath always sounded that demonic? So anyway, later that night, the demon is once again back to his old trick of pulling the girl's leg. Okay, now that is just rude. Go stand in the corner! There's someone standing over there. Oh, hey, it did! And you can just stay there until you learn how to behave, meanie. Mm, I'm a bad devil. So back in the B-plot, Ed and Lorraine Warren are going to investigate another case. Do you remember what you said to me on our wedding night? Can we do it again? Uh... What the hell is up with this movie? Did I ask to know that? So they go to some random couple's house and prove that it's not haunted. We've isolated the disturbances to the attic. Now I just want you to listen for a second. Oh my god, that's it. Do it again, Ed. Yeah? And who do you think is stepping on the floorboard in the middle of the night? The ghost! Duh! So, this place isn't haunted. 
No, it rarely is. Um, aren't they the ones who are supposed to believe you and not just shrug off the idea of ghosts? Worst Ghostbusters ever. Hello, Ghostbusters? I need you to come right away. I have a major infestation of ghosts. Oh, relax. Houses are rarely actually haunted. Have you considered that it might be the wind? So anyway, back in the A-plot, the mother hears a clap, and she assumes that it's her daughters playing that ridiculous non-game. But when she goes to check on them, they're all asleep in their beds. Then the pictures all fall off the wall. Oh, don't worry, I'm sure it's just the wind. She continues to go around looking for the source of the sound, until finally she ends up in the cellar, and she gets locked in. Now see, this is why you should have sprayed for termites. grip in here to relight this scene? We can't see a damn thing! That's what we get for using cheap lighting. Oh hey, she brought matches! You know what would have been more useful? A flashlight. Hey, wanna play hide and clap? Still not a game. Damn it! Will someone get the director's kid out of here? We're trying to film a dramatic moment. So anyway, back upstairs, the same girl from before is once again taking out her frustrations by banging her head against her dresser. But this time, when her sister removes her, the cabinet continues to slam itself. And wouldn't you know it, there's a creepy on top of it. Well, shit. I'd reenact this one too, but I don't really feel like sitting on top of my dresser. So cut back to the B-plot, where the Warrens are showing an audience an exploitation film. And it's here that our A and B-plots merge, as the mother asks the Warrens to investigate the house. There's something horrible happening in my house. Could you come and take a look? There's usually some sort of rational I explanation I have five daughters who are scared to death. Of course we will. Weren't they complaining earlier about how much they hate skeptics? And now they're the fucking skeptics. So the Warrens come over to see what they can figure out about the house. There's this awful smell like rotting meat that moves around the house. Well, our rancid smells could indicate some type of demonic activity. Remember when I told you your house wasn't haunted? I was lying. You've got demons. Well, that's quite a leap. You go straight from houses aren't really haunted, it's just the wind, to OMG demons? What? What? Well, that's to keep those doors from banging at night. Otherwise, it's like all night long, just like that. Does it come in threes? Yeah. Come in threes? Yeah. Well, sometimes it's meant as an insult to the Trinity. Or it could be a reference to the three sons of Noah, the three wise men, the three winters of Ragnarok, the three children of Loki, the three goddesses, the rule of three, the three act structure, the three branches of government, the three states of matter, the three signs of Aslan, the Three Rings for the Elven Kings, The Three Musketeers, The Three Stooges, The Three Installments of the Divergent series, or any number of other possibilities. But yeah, I guess that's as good a theory as any. Or here's a thought. Maybe the demon is just obsessive-compulsive and tapping out literally the most common pattern ever.
Or maybe it's in the threesomes. You know, it's the damnedest thing, but we also get all kinds of birds that will just fly against the side of the house and break their necks. Hmm. Yeah, our animal trainers really suck. We've already lost half of our filming animals. We were hanging those along the stairs. Something just kept knocking them down, so we stopped hanging them up. Sounds reasonable. That's why I gave up cleaning my room. Every time I'd do it, a demon would just come in and make it messy again. Can't do it, demons. Something awful happened here, Ed. Yeah, we know. This is where they filmed this movie. But honestly, it's not that bad. So anyway, Ed starts interviewing the parents, while Lorraine goes upstairs to talk to the imaginary friend girl about said imaginary friends. This apparently freaks her out a bit, so she goes outside to stand under the demon tree for a while to unwind. This proves to be a bad idea. Duh. Hey. Ugh, that doesn't look healthy. Perhaps you'd like an analgesic cream? Anyway, Lorraine joins Ed inside, and she tells the parents where she saw the dark energy. I saw it first when I came through your door. It was latched to your back. And then I saw it again with the girls when we walked into the living room. And what's their solution to all this? Watch The Exorcist. Well, Lorraine and I both feel uh, that what your house needs is a cleansing. An exorcism. Or that. I always get those confused. Have your children been baptized? Uh, no, we never got around to that. We're not really a church going family. Well, you may want to rethink that. Um, you do realize that the church doesn't have a monopoly on demons, right? Pretty much every religion has those. Carol and parent and with a family has been experiencing supernatural occurrences. All right, go ahead. Yeah. From the first occurrence. Nothing. Oh, sorry. That's just our incompetent boom mic operator. The guy's an idiot. Jetson Sherman, who was married to a woman named Beth Sheba. She's one of the women accused of witchcraft in Salem. She was hung during the trials. Lorraine then goes on to list other people who have died in the house. Her last name is Walker. She lived there in the 30s. Then she killed herself in the cellar. Oh, so you mean filming this movie wasn't the only bad thing to happen in that cellar? Anyway, the tape player turns itself on for no apparent reason, and this time the audio isn't blank, though it isn't exactly what it's supposed to be, either. Sorry, our audio guy had a stroke while mixing this and accidentally mixed in a dying walrus. It happens. I don't know why we had a dying walrus in the Foley studio, but it happens. Anyway, the sheriff arrives and they start unloading equipment for the night. All right, guys, let me get this stuff unloaded. We'll take this. Um, is someone gonna get that? I'd rather. All right. Wait, was that supposed to be the soundtrack? Huh. Maybe the house really is haunted. I think the soundtrack just died. When you're finished here, why don't you hit upstairs, right? You got it. Actually, on second thought, I think one of the grips got a call mid-scene, and they decided to turn it into a montage. Makes sense to me. So they decide to take advantage of the ringtone montage to set up the equipment. Touching your So they finish setting up the equipment, but just as they're doing so, a door creaks open for no apparent reason. What? I had to go. 
Well, that is how I always come out of the bathroom. presence of religious icons will get a reaction from anything unholy. Sort of pisses him off. It's not really the icons so much as the fact that you're shoving them up their ass. That pisses him off. Like holding a cross to a vampire? Yeah, exactly. Except I don't believe in vampires. Oh please, I only believe in my supernatural stuff. Your supernatural stuff is just silly. So the door to the cellar opens on its own, so the team goes down there to investigate. Let's keep the cellar light off. Yes, let's. That sounds much more sensible than not doing that. And then Ed proceeds to goad the demon into making an appearance. Hey, close the door, move something. Come on. Hey, wait a minute, didn't he say to never ever do that? Anyway, blatant hypocrisy aside, the night passes in relative peace, and the next morning, Lorraine does a load of laundry, because that should be a priority when you're battling a demon house. I could get used to this. This place. Mm -hmm. Nice, fresh country here. Mm -hmm. Um, isn't there a rule about thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's haunted house? Actually, maybe not. That kind of goes without saying. But before you have time to wonder why there's so much sun in a horror movie, the sun is instantly swallowed up by the fastest storm ever. Um, sorry, uh, one of our grips just walked by the set and caught that sheet as it was blowing away. Totally ruined the dramatic moment. Uh, do you want to try and retake that? But there's no time to retake it, as the mother is upstairs asleep when she's suddenly woken up by a floating creepy who vomits raspberry ecto-cooler into her mouth. Um, you? Need I bother with the ooh, ah, or is it a given? Anyway, later that night, the sheriff is alone in the kitchen, which they should really know better than to do by now, when he hears a creepy voice. So, like an idiot, he goes to investigate on his own, and only calls for help when the creepy almost gets him. Ed? Look what you made me do! So everyone comes rushing to his aid, but then one of the girls starts walking up the stairs in a trance. They follow her up to the room, but when they go in, she's disappeared. But they quickly find her in a secret passage. that a secret tunnel? I've got your secret tunnel. So anyway, Lorraine falls down through a rotten floorboard and ends up in the old cellar. And she decides that the most logical course of action is to check her surroundings in the haunted mirror. Because that's a good idea. So yeah, it goes about as well as you would expect, with her seeing multiple creepies all at once, including this chilling specimen. Hmm, now why am I getting flashbacks of last Tuesday?
good times. That was a weird Tuesday. So anyway, we get one good demonic ragdoll toss for the trailer, and also so that the Warrens have something to show their priest friends. Does this annoy you? I'm not touching you. Does this annoy you? I'm not touching you. So the family all go to stay in a hotel, which apparently they could have done this whole time. So the next morning, they go to show the footage. The kids aren't baptized. No, I understand. And the family, they're not members of the church. Well, that's cold. You won't help them just because their beliefs differ from yours? That's just rude. How would you like it if Meals on Wheels only served reformed druids? That would suck, wouldn't it? So anyway, cut back to the B-plot. Because we're apparently doing that again. The Warren's kid is woken up by the demonic schoolyard bully, and she goes down the stairs to try and find her parents, only to find the demon door unlocked and Annabelle out of her cage. See? This is why you shouldn't keep this stuff. You can't keep it contained. And even if you could, as I've mentioned, that wouldn't help to keep the demon under wraps. So thanks for almost getting your daughter killed with your negligence, asshole! So anyway, the mother has kidnapped two of her children and taken them to the house for the climax. So the Warrens follow her there. So we proceed to get a dramatic climax, with lots of kicking and screaming and demonic ragdoll tossing. Also a floating chair. For reasons. But we do interrupt the climax briefly for this impromptu remake of The Birds, because we'd only killed half of our bird allowance, and by God, we're going to kill the rest of them. Understand this, we are now fighting for her soul! Why? Why would her soul be in any danger from this? She didn't ask for the demon to vomit raspberry ecto-cooler into her mouth, so why would any of this count against her? Or are you implying that she did somehow ask for it to vomit raspberry ecto-cooler into her mouth and possess her? Uh, uh. Yeah, that's what I said. Speaking of which, do you have to give a demon a direct invitation? Or are they able to get in on some kind of a technicality? I mean, demons must be pretty good at finding loopholes. Who is it? Neighborhood Association. Make you a pie to welcome you to the neighborhood. Oh, thank you. Do come in. Huh, you fool. I'm not the Neighborhood Association at all. I'm the devil. And now that you've let me in of your own free will, I'm here to consume your soul. <laughs> Still have the pie. Yeah, you can still have the pie. Woo! So anyway, they get the demon out of her, and everything's fine. Unrealistically fine, actually. And then the movie ends with one final creepy pan around of the Warren's creepy basement. So that was The Conjuring. How was it? That was pretty good. Ed Warren could be a bit annoying at times with his hypocrisy and his holier-than-thou attitude, but otherwise everything was fine. The, the pacing was pretty good, and there were some good scares, and the effects were pretty good. Though honestly, the best parts of the film were at the beginning when we didn't see what it was. And we only had a sense of something there, or a description from someone who could see it. So on the whole, pretty good movie, and if you're into horror movies, then this one might be a good one to check out. Now that I've ruined literally every scare. Whoops. Heh. <laughs> Spoilers. Um, anyway. Until next time, here's your kid-friendly clip of the day.
foolish mortal! I didn't even bake this pie at all! I bought it off of the Walmart discount rack! I was lying about that too! Yeah, you can stop the pie.